This is your wake up call. Wake the fuck up. The Breakfast Club, the show you love to hate. From the East to the West Coast. DJ Envy. Angela Yee. Charlemagne the God. The realest show on the planet. This is why I respect this show because this is a voice to society. Changing the game. You guys are the, the coveted morning show, but y'all earn it. Impact in the culture. They wake up in the morning and they, they want to hear that breakfast club. The world's most dangerous morning show. We in the mother- we in the- Good morning, USA. Hey, fam. No, 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 no. Good morning, Angela Yee. <laughs> Good morning, TMV. I don't know where Charlemagne at is that, but it's Friday. I know that's right. It um, is Friday. Yes, I'm not sure if he's coming in or not, but today's drive-in was nasty and disgusting. The roads were horrible. The weather is just ugh, ugh, ugh. ugh. Yeah. Took me a long time. I have time to leave to go to. I have to leave to go to Nashville today, so I'm trying to keep on checking on. I know the weather's a little crazy everywhere, so. Yeah, I know a lot of flights sure were can. canceled today, so if you if you got to go to work, depending on where you're at, if you're on the East Coast, the weather's nasty. Uh, it was snowing last night, then sleet, then they say rain, and then it's going to freeze again. So if you're on the East Coast, give yourself a little extra time. Now, yesterday I went to record for Nick Cannon's show, so that's going to air today. So you make sure you watch that because the rumor report, Nick Cannon loves to do the rumor report. A lot of times it's about him mm-hmm. when I go on there. And then um, I went to go do an event with the mayor at the Apollo, the mayor of New York City, where we discussed uh, food, nutrition, the history of uh, black people, black culture and food, and also... Um, you know, plans of what you can do when it comes to policy and making sure that there's more equality when it comes to food. Because we all know the way they advertise in in black neighborhoods, the way that they, ha- the businesses that they have there, the cost of things, access. When you go to the supermarket, depending on where you are, sometimes the produce is fresh, sometimes it looks nasty. And a lot of that has to do with where you live. So it was mm. a great discussion. Okay. All right. No, that's great. Now, uh, I'm sure you update us on what's going on in uh, Russia and Ukraine, right? Absolutely. I mean, I've been following this, um, you know, in between everything I was doing yesterday, I was looking at uh, live updates right now. I've been watching the news all morning as they are live. They couldn't even go to commercial break because things are changing so much moment by moment as uh, it's day two of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So we will give you uh, the latest news that we have. Yeah, I was flying back from uh, I was in San Diego. I was flying back from San Diego and that whole six hour flight, five hour and 45 minutes. I was on CNN watching it. It's it's a lot to talk about, a lot to digest, a lot of things I'm not uh, sure of, but I'm sure we'll break it down next in front page news. And we have a special guest today. We have Minister Nori Mohammed, who is here to talk about uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan's speech this Sunday. It's called The Swan Song. So we'll kick it with him in a little bit as well. And uh, also, James Harden, he's scheduled to make his uh, Sixers debut tonight. So we'll get into that as well. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, quickly in the NBA report, James Harden is scheduled to make his sixth debut tonight against the, Tim, uh, the Timberwolves. That happens at 8 p.m. And they're playing in Minnesota. So we'll see how that works out. Harden, Joel Embiid, and the whole squad. All right? And the NBA report is brought to you by Hennessy, the spirit of the NBA. Now, let's talk, E. All right. So the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Let's talk about what Joe Biden had to say yesterday. Now, they did say that a a Biden speech, uh, according to Biden's speech, no option is off the table. But the reason they didn't start out with sanctions as far as energy, they said starting out with energy could actually benefit Putin and pad his pockets because of high oil and gas prices. Cutting off Russian oil and gas will actually drive prices up to Putin's benefit. So that's why you see a lot of economic sanctions. They're hitting the banks first. But they said those sanctions are designed to harm Russia's economy and not ours. So for people who are wondering why that hasn't been done yet, uh, that is the reason. Now, here is what Joe Joe Biden has to say about monitoring energy supply. We are closely monitoring energy supplies for any disruption. We've been coordinating with major oil producing and consuming countries toward our common interest to secure global energy supplies. We are actively working with countries around the world to elevate collective release from the strategic petroleum reserves of major energy consuming countries. And the United States will release additional barrels of oil as conditions warrant. 
Russia from the rest of the yeah, world. But so. Russia seemed like they don't care. And people are dying. Like Ukraine, it was like, look, I need help. Seems like the, everybody else is standing on the sidelines. We can't do this alone. Like, well, no, we, I wouldn't say do? everybody else is standing on the sidelines. But also, do you want to fight a war there? Because so far, Joe Biden is saying that we're not planning on uh, doing combat. So we'll see what happens with that. Because you know, I'm looking at everybody's reactions here. And it's interesting, too. But here is when Joe Biden is asked what Putin is threatening and what this is all about and what could be happening next. Here's what he uh, had to say about that. Is he threatening a nuclear strike? I have no idea what he's threatening. I know what he has done, number one. And number two, no one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from happening. It has to show, this is going to take time. And we have to show resolve so he knows what's coming. And so the people of Russia know what he's brought on them. That's what this is all about. He's going to test the resolve of the West to see if we stay together, and we will. That don't seem seem odd. Seem like we, we give them sanctions and they continue to do what they want to do. Like this. Well, it's been there's two no days, so you you do have to give it some time. It's not, and like I said, Putin Pe was anticipating this, but it does take time for dying. those sanctions to affect everybody. Uh, that's not our fault. I mean, Putin is the person that's doing these things. I don't know what what is the answer then right away, right? All right, Answers. now as far send some missiles over there. That'll fix, that, definite. That, that'll fix them up because they're not listening. They're not paying attention. It's not like we put the sanctions yeah, but out and they said, you know what, we're going to slow down. We put the sanctions out and then they continue. Like, but middle they're fingers still to innocent people. Mm -hmm. There's still innocent people in Russia that you don't want to just send missiles and bomb everybody. There's people in Russia who don't want this war to happen either. Right, but this is, some, this is something Ukraine, that Putin is doing. There's people in Ukraine that don't want this war to happen that's dying innocent people. And well. there's civilians on both sides. I don't think anybody in general wanted this to happen except for Putin and his administration. That's why I can't Does be. the average person want to be at war right now? People are dying. That's why I can't You're be absolutely president. correct. No. All right. Now, here is what uh, Joe Biden had to say about these sanctions and people who are questioning whether or not it was a good idea. Vladimir Putin has been planning this for months, as we've been saying all along. He moved more than 175,000 troops, military equipment, and positions along the Ukrainian border. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. And part of the problem is in Ukraine, they watch the news from Russia. So with the misinformation, you know, there's been intelligence all along that this was going to happen. But because they watch the news in Russia, there's a different type of information that they receive in Ukraine. So they were taught that this was just propaganda and not really about to happen. So if you're watching the news in Ukraine that's coming from Russia, you're thinking everything is good. So they were definitely caught by surprise. Now, here is what Joe Biden had to say about cyber attacks. America stands up to bullies. We stand up for freedom. If Russia pursues cyber attacks against our companies, our critical infrastructure, we are prepared to respond. <laughs> for months, we've been working closely with, our pri with the private sector to harden their cyber defenses, sharpen our ability to respond to Russian cyber attacks as well. We're going to respond with more sanctions. When they mess with the election, right. how, do, how do we respond? We put more sanctions. Yeah, Russia doesn't care about a sanction. I don't know if anybody notices. They, they don't care about a sanction. The sanction doesn't... It doesn't stop them from anything. Now, there have been 18,000 weapons given to reservists in the Kiev region as Ukrainian men who are from age 18 to 60 have been banned from leaving. So they have been giving out ammunition. They have been giving out guns uh, with that ammunition. And here is what Joe Biden has to say as far as the United States engaging in combat. Although we provided over $650 million in defensive assistance to Ukraine just this year, this last year, let me say it again. Our forces are not and will not be engaged in the conflict with Russia in Ukraine. 
As I made crystal clear, the United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power. And the good news is, NATO is more united and more determined than ever. There is no doubt, no doubt that the United States and every NATO ally will meet our Article 5 commitments, which says an attack on one is an attack on all. You know the U.S. spends $766 billion on the U.S. military, right? One little missile. Okay. It's just one little missile. Just, just, just a chill F out missile. Just, you, just, just, to, you know how you got to pop your kid on the, on the hand sometimes? Just to be like, chill out. You don't want to hurt him, but you just want to sting him so he knows. Just, just one chill F out. Leave the people And then you Ukraine want them alone. to send missiles back to the United States? Leave the people of Ukraine alone. Like, the people, like they're right. dying. They can't fight back. Well, well that, that, that sounds lovely. And that would be amazing if he would do that. But that is your front page news. I'm not this president. That's why. Well, let's get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. 800-585-1051. Hit us up right now. I think next time my kids do something, I'm going to put a sanction on them just to see what they say. See if that works. Yeah, it's a punishment. a punishment. Go sit in the corner. Go sit in the corner. No, well, yeah, well, yeah. All right. It does work. All right, call us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Kobe, good morning. Get off your chest, bro. Hey, uh, I just wanted to uh, hit on the topic about the Ukraine thing you were just talking about. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, I don't know too much about politics because, honestly, you can't really believe what they tell us anyway. But, you know what I'm saying? If we ain't got no no money-making business over there, I think we should mind our business and just, you know what I'm saying, they do fair for themselves. Honestly. Yeah, well, that's not know. how it works. We, you don't, you don't want to give... Well, that's the whole point, right? Right now, we're doing these sanctions to hit them economically and severe sanctions. And it's not just us. It is our allies in NATO and it is other countries. But you you don't want to just send people over to war. A lot of people here are saying they don't want to send uh, their sons off to war. A lot of people are not, aren't trying to go fight a war right now. And so that's why you do those sanctions. And it does take some time for Russia to be affected. But I also feel like, you know, Russia's trying to reestablish the Soviet Union and people don't want to give them that power. That is going to affect us. Right, that's going to be a lot of, of power. But, but, you know, my whole thing is if, if we're going to mind our business, let's mind our business. But once we start saying sanctions, that's not minding our business. That's still affecting Russia. That means we still in, 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 with problems with them, right? Hey, you don't know it's kind of messed up. What's that? Trump been poking at this Russia best for four years. As soon as Biden get in office, he's going to get attacked by it. Mm. Well, thank you. Hey, hey, man. Thank you for calling, brother. You be safe out there. Same, man. Same. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Bernard from Brooklyn. What's good, Envy? Bernard, what's up, man? Get it off your chest, brother. Yeah, I just want to get off my chest about what's going on in the news, man. It's nerve wracking, anxiety. Your man Biden looks like he's too old to take care of this problem. Yeah, I mean, Biden does look very old walking away from the podium yesterday. He looked very old. But, you know, I would say this. <laughs> as, as I really don't know. It's like, you know, people are saying, well, we should mind our business. We shouldn't get involved. But even when we start with the sanctions, we're getting involved. We're affecting Russia's, exactly. Russia's everything. So we're involved. Russia's going to come back at us. And I, you know? and I agree with you 100%. Like, you need to send them a little pot like you do with your kids. A little, you know what no, I mean? No, that is not how that works. <laughs> Angela Yee, I know you're nervous, but you got to remember, we two times champions. Whatever they got, we got double what they got. They Are you sure. willing to go fight a war? Yeah, I'll go right now. Okay, perfect. So you signed up. You signed up. You're in the military. The next reason why I'm mad, Kamala Harris. Why are you, baby girl? Where are you? All right. Well, thank you, brother. All right, thanks. And like I said, I am not a politician. I don't know much about it. I'm all I'm seeing is what I'm seeing on CNN. What I don't uh, that's just my opinion. I just feel like if we going to get involved with sanctions, that means we're getting involved. That means we're affecting Russia. That means they might be doing something to us right now. You know what I mean? They they told the banks, they told uh government, the electric panels, they said, you know, be aware. There're probably going to be some cyber attacks from Russia. That's what they're saying. So, uh, Russia's about to attack us anyway. You know what I mean? Maybe, allegedly, we don't know, but I I don't know. That's why I'm not the president. I just speak my mind. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? It's Chino. Chino, what up? Get it off your chest. I was calling to bother you by why you want Russia to bomb us. 
But you know, I just changed my mind, man. I just hope y'all have a blessed day today. I'm gonna have a blessed day today. <laughs> Everything gonna have be Have a blessed right, Friday, man. sir. There you go, Chino. Yes. For sure. Where you y'all calling from, Chino? I'm in Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. All right, man. You be I safe. Wish Char- I wish Charlemagne was there. I, I know he just love messing with Florida. <laughs> yeah, nah, Charlemagne, he's, oh, um, gosh. he's trying to get his connection done. So hopefully we'll, we'll, he'll be joining us in a little bit. Okay, y'all have a great day. Y'all be safe. All right, bro. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Michael from Columbus, Ohio. How you doing? Michael from Ohio. Get it off your chest, Michael. Man, I just want to tell you to chill out, man. Uh, everybody and their mama know that when Putin says that America or whoever invades and what he's trying to do will fill the power like they have never felt before. Of course, he's talking about nuclear weapons. So you're talking about us throwing the missile over there because people are dying. Remember, Sarah Palin said Russia's in her backyard. They're going to attack us with nuclear bombs. So we have to take the steps that Joe Biden has taken in order for us to make Russia feel what that, you know, that we're not playing. Mm-hmm. We don't want to die over here. I just wanted to get that mm-hmm. off my chest, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree I with want, that. Don't we don't, want, we don't want them to bomb us. Yeah, no, I But that listen, either. countries, and it's not just the United States that's doing these sanctions, by the way. It's countries all around the world. It's a global, there's global sanctions right now. And it has already affected Russia. You can see their stock market has tanked. Their currency has gone down. And so it is affecting people. So, you know, it takes some time. It's only day two right now, but Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, um, the UK, everybody is, has these sanctions against Russia. And I think that's the main thing. This has to be a global effort where they're cut off completely and can't even function. Yeah, but, you know, Russia has done this, what, three years ago, took over another... Uh a colony or, or, or a situation over there before this is what Russia's doing they're trying to create a superpower and I don't know if these sanctions are going to be enough to stop it I, I don't know and people are saying well maybe we should mind our business but I feel like with us you know putting these sanctions out there it's not minding our business right there I mean it, it's, it's almost like we're attacking Russia and they're going to attack us back I feel maybe not I don't know but America is the one that that you know we say it's it's a it's a bunch of people that put out the sanctions but yesterday on the news, it looked like it came from the United States, didn't it? Well, that's because we're watching the news here in the United States. So we're talking about what we're doing. But they, they, this is definitely a global effort. Okay. Well, I don't want to see anybody die. How about that? I don't want to see any war. I don't want to see any soldiers. I don't want. I just don't want to see anybody hurt. But I just feel like, you know, Russia's playing the bully right now. And, and they're just doing what they want to do. Which is sad because a lot of people, a lot of innocent people are dying. And I think right, so far they're saying about 140 people have been killed um, in the eva- in the invasion. And that was as of yesterday, and they were bombing again last night, right? Mm-hmm. Sad. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now we got rumors on the way? Yes, and Wendy Williams is leaving daytime television, but according to reports, she may be getting millions for something else. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I think it's... Wake that ass up in the morning. Check out this Breakfast Club Rewind. Her daughter is 17 years old now. Isn't that amazing? Brandy's so. daughter is 17? Yes. Why are you acting surprised about that? Like you wasn't grown as hell when she was on TV having that baby, man. I didn't know. You were in your 20s then. Jeez. Wow. Knock it off. Like, I'm bugging. My daughter's flies, 18. Like, I'm bugging. Like, what am I talking about? Yes. Oh, so you had you got grown kids your goddamn Brandy. self. Hey, my daughter's 18. I got an 18, a 16, a, a 6, a 5, and a 3 year old. What am I saying? You're talking about damn. That's what happens when you pretend to be young all the goddamn time. No, it's not even that. You just old as hell. Time flies. Like I just thought about. Like I got an eighteen-year-old. What the hell? Taking you back, back, back with the classic rewind. Rewind. It's the Breakfast Club. I thought this was a podcast. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Wendy Williams, according to reports, may receive millions for a speculated upcoming podcast, according to reports. So Al Reynolds actually shared claims that Wendy Williams is in talks to land her own multimillion dollar podcast. Uh, he said the word on the street. Now, these are the deep, deep streets say that Wendy is working on a multi- multimillion dollar podcast deal. We know that Spotify gave Joe Rogan $100 million for his podcast. So everybody knows. He said, you heard it here first on Fox Soul. So that is where he actually um, announced that news. I mean, I think it'd be great if Wendy starts with the podcast. Uh, I mean, that way she can do it from wherever she's from or wherever she's at. Uh, She doesn't have to do video if she doesn't want to. I'm sure she will. But I think that's great. And I think she'll get a lot of money doing it. And I'm excited. I would love to hear Wendy doing a podcast every week. 
Yeah, it makes sense at her own, you know, timing, pace. And she's so conversational, and it would kind of be like back to her roots. Yes, and it's not strenuous. She didn't, she wouldn't have to do a show every day. You know what I mean? She could just pick one a day, and I mean once a week, and, and knock it out. I think that'd be dope. All right, right now, we've been talking about Ukraine, and we've been talking about Russia invading Ukraine all morning. Well, Sean Penn is actually in Ukraine, and he's filming a documentary about the conflict with Russia, which escalated on Wednesday. And he's shooting that doc. Uh, while shooting it, he met with the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, and he said he attended a government press briefing uh, as the country rallied itself against the attack. And Zelensky uh, previously, previously had posted a video on Instagram of himself with Sean Penn. He wrote in that caption, the more people know about the war in the Ukraine, the higher the likelihood of stopping Russia. So, I mean, he is on the ground mm -hmm. over there right now. So, uh, yes, that's Sean Penn yeah, in I, Ukraine. And, and again, I, I pray for, for everybody out there, especially in Ukraine. It's, I mean, they were saying uh, yesterday in New York alone is 150,000 people that are from that region in, in Ukraine. And. And, you know, we just pray for them. They got family. They got friends. They got sisters. They got brothers. They got aunties. They got moms, dads. So just, you know, pray for them. All right. Now, Jasmine Sullivan has canceled her tour dates after catching COVID. So if you were hoping to see her perform live for her hotels tour within the next week or two, uh, just understand that that is not going to happen. She posted on her uh, on her page. Hi, everyone. My doctor confirmed today that I'm positive with COVID. I am taking every precaution to isolate myself. I'm truly sad to have to cancel more shows, but health and safety come first for myself my team and all of you LA show tomorrow will unfortunately be canceled and we are likely canceling shows for the next week based on my condition and the condition of my crew, but make sure you stay tuned. Uh, she'll be posting her own tickets and rescheduling information for people who had bought theirs. They'll actually contact you via email. Yeah. COVID is still out there. I mean, there's so many other things going on that we discuss and whether it's the war, whether it's uh, Kanye West, whether it's your favorite artist, but we forget that COVID is still serious out there. It's still killing people and busting our asses out there. So we still got to make sure that we're careful and be safe. And Jennifer Lopez is going to be getting the icon honor at the iHeartRadio Music Awards. And guess who's hosting? LL Cool J. Nice. Queens. Oh, Queens get the money. I like that. All right. That ceremony is scheduled for March 22nd in LA at the Shrine Auditorium. So. That'll be dope. Congratulations to J-Lo for that. And congratulations also are in order for Niecy Nash and Jessica Betts. They are making, quote, her story. They're the first queer couple on the cover of Essence. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful cover. And Niecy Nash, who announced her marriage in a surprise Instagram post in August of 2020, told Essence that the initial public reaction to her union caught her off guard. She said a lot of people thought it was like a movie or some promo. They started calling everybody. And we were like, this is insane. I never knew why where you lay your head is such a big deal to other people. I was like, people care. And so they first connected on social media back in 2015 when Niecy Nash was happily married to Jay Tucker. And then once Nash and Tucker announced their separation in a joint statement and their divorce was finalized, um, you know, that's when I guess things started happening from there. She said, what I was and am still attracted to is Jessica's soul. She was the most beautiful soul I had ever met in my life. Now that I've experienced it, I can't imagine going through life without it. And so she also said um, her social media PDA with her wife has more to do with providing genuine representation rather than spearheading social commentary. She said agendas feel very forced. If there's an agenda, it's that we're going to spread queer joy. The world needs it. Real talk. Yeah. Shout to Essence, man. I love what Essence is doing out there, what their covers and, and what they're doing out there for the community. I know uh, last month they had what pinky they had pinky on the cover and also Derek hayes i thought that was dope pinky coles and Derek hayes i, I love they had met the man on the cover talking about uh the man's means business talking about some of the stuff that he's doing so shout out to essence and the whole staff I, I love what you guys are doing I really do and speaking of pinky pinky owns slutty vegan actually she's opening one in brooklyn mm -hmm. i saw that she posted that yesterday so y'all know i am so excited it's actually right near where i live so i will be up uh in her spot there hey, shout out to pinky right, and now Derek. you know they recently just announced that they're having a baby and they bought i think like yep. 30 houses in the area so they bought the whole block and they're going to be building they up definitely bought the block so shout out to Derek hayes and pinky cole i, I seen them uh, at the uh, super bowl i was hanging with them at the super bowl so congratulations to them i love them all right, now MC Light is talking about her pending divorce. And so uh, she filed for divorce. They said it's been almost three years 
since she filed for divorce. They don't live together. They don't have any kids. They met on Match.com. They got married in Jamaica in August of 2017. Now she was on The Real, and here's what she had to say about why things didn't work out. I think in the very beginning, I was very distraught, you know. I, I feel like there are phases whenever a relationship is ending, whether you're married or not. So it's that first phase, like, oh, my God, I got to make this work for us. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, oh, my God, I got to make it work for everybody else involved, yeah. the family, you know, if there are children. Uh, and then you get to a point where, like, you know what, this ain't working. It doesn't matter. And what really matters is that we both end up in a happy place. Yeah. Wow. I didn't now, even know was married. I didn't even know she was married. Yeah, and it's been almost three years since she filed. And the reason why it's taking so long, he doesn't want to sign the papers. <laughs> All right. Well, that is your rumor report. I don't understand that. If if the woman wants to get a divorce, right? And this is not just this situation, but it seems like in a bunch of situations. How can a man Kardashian just, Kanye. Yeah, how can a man just be like, no, nah, I'm not signing that. We're not, we, we, we're not going away. You're not leaving me. I'm not signing that. That's, doesn't that seem wild? Yeah, divorces can take a really long time. Some people stay married but like aren't together because it's it can be expensive and it can be you know time consuming. How, if I don't want to be with you, you're gonna be like, well, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not signing this. Doesn't that seem crazy? Mm, I agree. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right, we got uh, we got front page news next. What are we talking about? Uh, yes. I mean, you know what we're talking about. We're going to uh, continue to give you updates on what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, since Russia has invaded, we are in day two of that invasion. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that has been saving people money for nearly 60 years. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And you should take a closer look at The General. Call 800 General or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Where we starting, Yee? All right. Well, we are keeping our eye on what's happening in Ukraine right now. Um, I've been watching the news all morning, all night, just to see what is going on. So we'll give you some updates on that. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, German lawmakers are calling on... Uh, people to cut Russia from that SWIFT payment system. So that is the European Union's uh, latest round of sanctions on Moscow. And if you guys have ever done any type of like wire transfers, you know, internationally, you have to use SWIFT. Mm -hmm. And so that is... Um, a way that they're still trying to hit them with these uh, sanctions. They said the swift exclusion of Russia must not fail now because of Germany. So they want to make sure that they are cut from uh, those payment systems, which is, like we said, very vital. Now, a Russian airfield targeted by Ukrainian forces, they do have uh, social media video and images of that. They say that airfield has been struck by at least one missile. It's unclear who carried out the attack. And neither the Ukrainian nor Russian governments have commented, but there's a video that shows a long range missile hitting the airfield and several fires in the runway. Mm. Now, meanwhile, in Russia and Berlin, um, thousands of people have been protesting because they do not want this war to happen. They're carrying Ukrainian flags. They've been chanting stand with Ukraine and stop Putin, stop war. And they're holding up signs reading cut swift, cut Russia off and radical sanctions against Russia uh, now. Now that's also happening in Germany. And so, uh, yes, people have been protesting and uh, Kremlin says that Russians do not have the right to organize protest actions without permission. So those demonstrations during a protest against Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Moscow uh, was stopped. They said that they do not have the right to do that and they do have to seek permission. I can't imagine that they'll get permission. No, I mean, uh, somebody texted me <laughs> and said that uh, Bush Sr., when he was in office, they said he had Ukraine disable all their nuclear weapons in exchange for protection. So that's why. Yeah, they did. That's why they're saying Ukraine is like, where? where's America? Where are these people are standing on the sidelines? Not, not helping. We don't have the necessarily the force to protect ourselves and, and nobody's helping. Yeah, that was a peace treaty that they made back then that Russia has clearly violated and they don't care that they violated that. Mm. All right. So um, here is, by the way, Donald Trump is definitely doubling down on his support of Putin. Now he was on NPR. And here's what he had to say about the Russian president. So Putin is now saying it's independent, a large section of Ukraine. I said, how smart is that? And he's going to go in and be a peacekeeper. That's the strongest peace force. We could use that on our southern border. 
That's the strongest peace force I've ever seen. There were more army tanks than I've ever seen. They're going to keep peace all right. By the way, this never would have happened with us. Had I been in office, not even thinkable. This would never have happened. And you know what the response was from Biden? There was no response. They didn't have one for that. Now it's very sad. Imagine that. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's sad what's going on, and I hate the fact that, that so many Ukraine innocent people are dying just because Putin wants more control and wants to just take over. That just seems Now, wild U.S. intelligence weird. officials are concerned that Ukrainian capital could fall to Russia within days. And again, you know, they are they do feel like right now Putin is trying to get rid of the Ukrainian president and put in his own person uh, that is basically a puppet. Yeah, so but, we'll but my, keep... my thing is they're saying it, 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 they're going to take over Ukraine in days. So what happens when they take over Ukraine? We'll put some more sanctions and then Russia will be like, all right, I'm done. I took over Ukraine. And then what happens from there? How long do these sanctions yeah. go in place? Do they say, does Russia say, you know what? All right. These sanctions are hurting. I'm going to give you back Ukraine after they killed everybody, after they killed the, the damn near government. Like what happened? Well, I think that Putin, I think Putin believes that he would take over uh, relatively quickly, but they have been fighting back in Ukraine. So we'll see how long this lasts. Like, like uh, Joe Biden said earlier, we've sent over hundreds of millions of dollars worth of um, military equipment and money and finances. And so there is a lot of support globally. And right now, everybody's doing these sanctions globally. But like Putin said, anybody who interferes, you know, will be met with a harsh response. And we don't we know what that means. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the right. So but it just, is it is day two. I'm just saying, like, you know, that, that Ukraine is, is telling people, hey, if you're over a certain age, you can't leave. We need you. So these people are not trained. So now when you drop these these weapons off and these vehicles off and this ammunition and things without training, you know how difficult it is? You just drop a, a, a gun somewhere. If I just give you, yeah, you never shot a gun in your life. I give you a gun. Yes, I have. Oh, you have shot a gun. Yeah, I've been to a gun range. Okay, I give you a machine gun. You ain't going to know what to do with that machine gun. You got to know how to reload and all that. You ain't going to know. There's all no right, training. Well, that, it, that is your front page news. All right, well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Now, yesterday we were, uh, Cam Newton, we have the audio of Cam Newton? Do we have that audio? Yeah, let's play the audio of Cam Newton. Who is he talking to? Uh, Brittany Renner. Brittany Renner. And he was talking about why he hasn't got married after having uh, four kids. Why would you give me a forever commitment, which is a child, versus like, where's my ring? The thing is, that person that I was while we were having children together, I couldn't be the best husband. I wasn't prepared to be a husband then. Okay. And the, the hourglass was shrinking for her. And I was in Temptation Island, yeah. a football player, young. And did she deserve better? I will humbly say yes. Well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Why is somebody good enough to have a child with but not marry? That is the question. 800-585-1051. That's for women and men. And ladies, maybe you just wanted a child from homie, but you're like, he's not marriage material. Why? Why keep having babies? Same thing with the fellas. Why, why keep having a baby with this young lady, but you don't want to marry her? Why is she good enough to have a child with, with children with, but she's not good enough to be a wife? Let's talk about it. 800 800- 585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we were talking about Brittany Renner and Cam Newton, they had a conversation and Cam Newton has four children but hasn't gotten married and this is the reason why. Why would you give me a forever commitment, which is a child, versus like, where's my ring? The thing is, that person that I was while we were having children together, I couldn't be the best husband. I wasn't prepared to be a husband then. Okay. And the, the hourglass was shrinking for her. And I was in Temptation Island. Yeah. A football player, young, and does she deserve better? I will humbly say yes. So we're asking 800-585-1051. Why is someone good to have a child with but not to marry? That is the question. Now, you, you're not in that situation. I'm not in that situation. But what are your thoughts, though? Um, I mean, I don't think you should just marry somebody just because you have kids together or you have a child together if you're not in love that you know i think sometimes people get married for that reason they feel like i don't want to have a child out of wedlock 
Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Now, I can't tell anybody else what to do. If you feel like, look, this is what I want to do. I want to marry this person because I want my child to grow up in the household with us. And that's my belief. Go for it. But I feel like if I don't love you, I don't want to get married. Yeah, but you know, that uh, maybe the first kid, but the second, third and fourth kid, you know, you she's good enough to have a, a child with you, but not good enough to marry. That doesn't seem strange. I, I'm just asking. Also, some people don't feel like you have to be married. Okay. You that know, there's true. people that feel like I could be with you forever and not marry you. Okay. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hi, it's Tatiana. Hey, Tatiana. Good morning. Good morning. So we're asking, uh, why is someone good enough to have a child with but not to marry? Well, I don't know if it's about being good enough or not, but I do believe that men are feel more comfortable with giving someone a child rather than making that commitment legally on paper. It's easy to give someone a baby because you know that no matter what you do, they're going to be there. They're stuck with that baby. A mother's not going to walk away from her child. It's easier for a man to walk away and say, okay, well, I'm going to go do this and that because I know she at home with my kid and they're not going nowhere. So when I'm ready to be a a family unit, she's going to accept me for that because that's what women, all women want that. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you, Tatiana. Thank you. You guys have a good day. You too. Hello. You too, Tatiana. Hello, who's this? Good morning. How you doing? Hey, what's your name? My name is Jaja from Yonkers. Jaja from Yonkers. Good morning. What's your thoughts, Good Jaja? morning, Jaja. Good morning, Aunt Shirley. Good morning, everybody. I love y'all. Oh, my God. I've been trying to get through to y'all every morning, okay? <laughs> because right now, I'm struggling with positions and titles. So this is a good one. Go. No, <laughs> your position in life, the titles, everything has a meaning, right? Mm-hmm. Everything has a meaning. Everything has a saying. So whatever it is, they better know what they in for. And in, at the moment, it can do change. What are you talking about, Josh? I'm confused. Yeah, yeah I don't know what... what... Say it again. What was the question? Oh, my goodness. Zaza. <laughs> what Zaza. is your title, Zaza? I love you, Zaza. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta excuse me. Okay, the question was, they was good enough to have a baby with, right? Right. Okay. Right. Have a baby with. So now you want to be good enough to be able to play the role of being a baby mama, right? Mm-hmm. So know them roles of the baby mama. Know them titles. All right, Zaza. You have a good day, Zaza. <laughs> <laughs> she just woke up me. I just want you to know she that. She's like, I want to talk this morning. <laughs> she confused me. She said, what's the question again? Hello, who's this? <laughs> that's what I That's what I said, too. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Destiny. Hey, Destiny. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Doing well. We're talking. We're asking, why is someone good to have a child with but not to marry? Because it's so simple. And we've heard this time and time again. Because you allowed it. A man will do what you allow. It's not about that somebody was good enough. It was that you allowed him to impregnate you. And maybe she stayed for the perks. I mean, she didn't mind the situation. Four kids later. And let's be real. We all know a girl that stayed thinking she could change a man. And surely she didn't think she was gonna wake, he was going to wake up one day with a Russell Wilson mentality. And, you know, one day the right woman, the right woman will get a ring. And I hope she doesn't wonder what she could have done differently. There's literally nothing you can do differently. Like, Mm -hmm. his mind was already made up. Lots of men are stubborn. They're stuck in their ways. And maybe it was a phase in his life that she just happened to be there through. And when that phase is over, he's going to want to get married probably one day. And, I mean, I know girls that were cheated on in college, thugged it out, stuck it out, stayed with their man. And now they're married with kids. I mean, but that couldn't be me. I mean, I'm not the... My uh, it's my man and I'm a, I'm a stick beside him like right a sweet stone like she she wanted to stick beside him and she knew what it was we all know what okay. it is <laughs> I'm with you though I ain't no ride or die I'm with you I mean but some people <laughs> right. are but yes thank you Destiny thank you eight hundred five eight five one zero five one we're asking if you just join us uh, why is someone good to have a child with but not to marry. Uh, some men will have children, have a couple of children, but just don't want to marry. And, and same thing with women. Women have a, a a child with somebody, but doesn't find him as husband material. So we're asking why. Call us up now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it, man. I know it, man. I know it, man. I know it, man. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051.
Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, this actually comes from Brittany Renner and Cam Newton. They were talking, and this is what they said. Why would you give me a forever commitment, which is a child, versus, like, where's my ring? The thing is, that person that I was while we were having children together, I couldn't be the best husband. I wasn't prepared to be a husband then. Okay. And the, the hourglass was shrinking for her. And I was in Temptation Island, yeah. a football player, young. And did she deserve better? I will humbly say yes. So we're asking 800-585-1051. Why is someone good enough to have a child with but not marry? All right. Uh, and I get it. You know, sometimes you have a child with somebody wasn't planned and you don't want to get married. That's not your person. That's not your connection. But when you have two, three and four. Yeah, seem, that's a lot. This seems kind of strange. Like, you know, but maybe people don't believe in marriage. So let's go to the phone lines. Hello. Who's this? Natasha. Hey, Natasha. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're good. Talk to us, Natasha. So, in regards to the question that you guys asked about if you're good enough to have children with or you know, or not, I think that it has a lot to do with mindset. I don't mm-hmm. think it has anything to do with the person that usually not, I'm going to say not the woman or the man, but I don't think it has anything to do with the person that you're having it with. It's just a mindset. Like me, me and my husband, we have six kids. Um, we're 27 and we started having kids at 18. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, it could have gone totally left. When we started having children, neither one of us were mature enough to realize how much it takes to have children. We just, when, when you're doing it, you're thinking about you, you're thinking about the void that they can possibly feel. You don't think about how it affects the kids in the long run. And and so you, we just continue in the same pattern of having children out of wedlock, no commitment, and then in the long run, this simple temptation that we thought was going to fill some kind of void ends up affecting the children in the long run. I don't think that it's a cycle that should continue. I think that it's mm-hmm. something that people should take a step back from and think about the consequences that could happen when you keep in this same cycle. I don't think it's fair to the kids at the end of the day. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> she broke it down. Hello, who's this? Mm-hmm. Malcolm from uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Malcolm from South Carolina. Good morning, brother. What's up, player? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. We're asking, why is someone good enough to have a child with but not to marry? Okay. Uh, Envy, check out the breakdown. Okay. So, when two people are vibing and having intercourse, that's where, of course, where kids come from. Kids are gifts. Whether you are rich or poor, you you have intercourse with somebody, a gift is born. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So being that a gift is born, that don't have nothing to do with marriage. Marriage comes from a different entity of two souls coming together. So just because we have a gift together, that don't mean our souls match up. Therefore, that's why it's able for us to vibe as friends sexually and have a beautiful child and be great parents, but not be What about husbands. several? What about wow. several children? Yeah, do you several think it counts? Right, but still with several children, a gift is a gift. If we vibing for eight years and we have a sexual intercourse, you know what I'm saying, raw and all that, kids are going to come from that. But that still don't have nothing to do with husband and wife. Like, sex has nothing to do with the the the, 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 the tie of souls coming together and being one. Sex is sometimes just sex. So you could, you could See, keep- it's interesting. You know what's interesting? Nick Cannon just recently was talking about this, and he was saying if he takes a, he takes a condom off if he feels like that's somebody that he wants to have a baby with. And but I don't know if he wants See, to get married. With Nick Cannon, he got bread, so he could populate this world <laughs> how he wants. He can afford these. <laughs> he can afford folk, these gifts. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Us common folk, we we try to plan our gifts out with our financial, you know, statuses. When you got bread, you could be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. Y'all be blessed. So what's the moral of the story, Yeezy? I mean, the moral of the story is if both people are in agreement with how things should happen and no one wants to get married and you want to have kids and that's your choice to do that, then go ahead. But things get murky if one person wants to get married and the other person does not. So don't lead somebody on by continuing to have kids with them if they're expecting a full-fledged marriage from it. All right. Well, we got rumors on the way. Yes. And Kodak Black was on The Breakfast Club and he was talking about his upcoming gender reveal. We'll tell you what happened. And also, don't forget, Charlemagne is out. He's having uh, troubles connecting. So 
Who you want to give Donkey the day to? You can give Donkey the day to anybody you want. 800-585-1051. Your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, me, ye, Shala. Whoever you want to give Donkey the day to, call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Come on. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee. Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Now, shout out to my brother DJ Louis V. DJ out and program director out in Atlanta. He's celebrating his birthday this week. And so, Atlanta, I'm going to see you Friday and Saturday. And then uh, for brunch, and then Saturday night, I'll be in Jacksonville, Florida. And shout out to everybody that's heading out to uh, CIAA. Huge basketball tournament. That's where the Breakfast Club used to do our day party. That's where you could actually come and hang out with the Breakfast Club. We drink with you and shoot the ish with you guys. But this is going to be the first year that we're not doing it. And that's partly because the CIAA moved from North Carolina to Baltimore, the DMV area. So... I know there's a lot of people heading out to the CIAA. You guys be careful out there. Be safe out there. I know the weather's been nasty on the East Coast uh, the last uh, day or so. So just be careful out there if you're heading out there. All right. And don't forget, Donkey today is coming up. Charlemagne is out. He couldn't get his uh, his thing working today. So uh, 800-585-1051 if you want to give somebody Donkey of the Day. Phone lines are wide open. Rumors are up next. We're going to start off with Kodak. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee. All right. Well, Kodak Black has posted on social media about his gender reveal. Now, just a flashback when he was on The Breakfast Club and he told us he was having one. Here's what he had to say. I ain't bringing home no other girl. I want my boy. Daughter, slow you down, Kodak. Daughters, I mean, all children are blessings, but a daughter is a a blessing blessing. No, she won't. Why not? (laughs) I just had a girl. I just had a dog. So like, I want my little boy, bro, because it's like, like, like I talked to y'all before. My son, I ain't find out about him until he was like one already. You hear me? So it's like, I want that new friend to scratch. You hear me? Like my little And then it was like, like the situation for me and his mom, like, wound to my see eye to eye. Like, we be vibing, we be straight in that neutral, like. Mm-hmm. Well, on his post, he said, my baby mom's so pretty. I wore blue and pink to be neutral about everything, even though I wanted a boy because I just had a daughter in January. I was a little upset when that pink smoke came out, but it is what it is. I know we'll produce a beautiful, healthy baby. To be honest, I was supposed to have two daughters anyways for my legacy, king, queen, princess, and prince. The next one going to be a boy, though, no matter what. I would forever love all my kids the same. Yeah, Kodak, that decision not to you unless you do in vitro, but... I mean, I'm just happy. Hopefully they have a healthy baby. And um, I know people were mad mm-hmm. at him for saying that. Yeah. I I do feel like, you know, you don't ever want to put that out there because then later on you don't want your kid to be like, you didn't want, you know, you wanted a boy. I feel like my parents wanted a boy. You got But you got a brother. Instead, I know, but I feel like they thought, you know, I was a very tomboyish growing up and my dad always raised me like to, I don't know, it's just weird. But I, I definitely think they wanted me to be a boy. <laughs> but here I am. Here you are. How? All right, now Fat Joe uh, was on Instagram Live and he was telling a story about the terror squad and how they had a very dangerous situation where they could have died during the Puerto Rican parade in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now, he here's what he said about fighting a club of 1,000 people at least against him. Now we go from Puerto Rican parade, we just performed, to 5,000 guys in the club jumping us. It's like 10 of us Against five literally guys. ten of us. Listen to me, we got our ass whooped. Like I mean, I don't know how we alive, right? Because we fought the, at the very least a thousand people. The whole club turned on us. Yeah, towards the end they pulled out like, a thousand hammers on us. Those was the the fake BMF of the air. Like they ran this. <laughs> Let's be a minute. We went in there with <laughs> guys. We was there with the realists. We had. Yeah, Connecticut don't play. Uh, Connecticut is serious. Shout out to everybody in Connecticut. I mean, there was a time where Connecticut felt the way about New Yorkers too. So it was it was really bad. But I, I remember going there and doing a party. And when I left the club, we went up to the we went up the block to go to another club. And when we got back to our car, they flattened all our tires. And we had four all flat right. tires, three in the morning, and we had to try to figure out how to get home. It was yeah, Connecticut don't play. We got into a bunch of altercations in Connecticut back in the day. <laughs> well, at least you didn't almost die, right? You're right. You're right. All right, now Bow Wow has fired back after he was included on a list of corny celebs. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, this list had like Will Smith on it. Uh, it had Wayne Brady, Drake, uh, Nick Cannon, Donald Glover. 
I personally don't look at any of those people as corny, but Bow Wow went in the comments section on Hollywood Unlocked and he said, because we ain't beefing with N-words because we ain't shooting at N-words. This corny ish got us all the bitches, though. I guess they like this corny ish. Corny, but got all this money. Corny because N words ain't got pending cases or taking these dumbass drugs that be having N words looking dumb and talking slow. Corny because we don't promote taking that ish. Corny, but all the street N words buying up my do rags and brushes and all my products. I'll take corny and rich over having to have a million N words with me looking over my shoulder, paranoid every day, wondering if the ops come and we can go anywhere we want. Your fave rapper can't. Your N words is lost out there. Meet us at the bank. Where, where's that list? I don't see that list. There's not the wrong the, any list with Nick Cannon, Will Smith, Wayne Brady. I ain't mad at that list. That sounds like a money list. That sounds like a multi million dollar list right there. I ain't mad at that list. Put me on. I'm uh, hey Bauer. You don't want to be on that list. I'll be on that list. Shoot. You know who's corny? The put, person who did that. <laughs> absolutely. The person put, who did that list is corny. You put because I guarantee Smith you on a list and you call it corny. Are and you, Donald Glover who created Atlanta. I ain't mad at this yeah. list. You're not mad at it? I, I want to be on that list. That list is a good oh. list. E you can easily be added. Thank All you. right, well, that is your rumor report. I'm on that list now. Any list with Will Smith, Donald uh, Glover, Wayne Brady, shoot. Hey, hey. All right, I'll be corny. Drake, 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 Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. I'm not, and like he said, Bow Wow said it sit, like the best way. That list is the list of people that make money that don't have to look over their shoulder. Will Smith ain't looking over his back about somebody beating him up. Neither is Danny Glover. Neither is Drake. Or maybe Drake a little bit. But he might be the Donald only Glover, one. not Danny Glover. Oh, Donald Glover. And who it was? Uh, <laughs> Wayne Brady? Man, listen. <sighs> Put me on that list. You're All a right. damn fool if you don't want to be on that list. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. Now, coming up next, Donkey of the Day. If you want to give somebody Donkey, 800 585 1051. We'll do it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. If you're a true music lover, you live for that connection with your favorite music and artists, now thanks to One Of and the NFT revolution, that connection is about to get much deeper. Learn more about One Of, the new green NFT platform built for the music community at oneof.com. It's your time to nominate a donkey of your own. Remember now, that's it's how they choose. Call in now, 800-585-1051. This is Kendra. Hey, Kendra, who you want to give Donkey today to? Um, I want to give Donkey of the day to my ex friend, um, Crystal, out in LA. Why? Um, because I went out there for Super Bowl. Um, I literally flew out there the day of Super Bowl, and I was leaving that Tuesday morning at like 5 a.m. Uh -huh. And that Monday, she got mad because I wouldn't babysit for her, and she put me out. She basically was like, if you're not going to babysit for me, then you need to find somewhere else to stay. Wow. Like, I came out here to party. I didn't come out here to babysit. And the sucky part is that I came out there for like business and play. So that morning I had got up and went to work. Uh, and then I was leaving at 5 a.m. And she basically was like, uh, you can't stay here if you're not going to watch my daughter so I can go on a date. So you left. I left. I left in tears because we've been friends since college. And I was like, Really, like, I never, as a single wow. mother, like, I would never even ask my friends to watch my kid when they came in town to have a good time. Wow. So I thought that was, like, a sense of entitlement that was just, like, beyond me. I almost thought I was the father, the way she, like, was upset that I wouldn't watch her kid. Wow, that's nasty. That's disgusting. Well, F4, you should have did something disrespectful, like put mad toilet paper in her toilet and kept flushing or something like that. <laughs> that's what you should have did. I was too busy crying because uh. I was, like, I almost felt like I was a bad dad, and it wasn't even my child. Damn it, man. Well, did you enjoy yourself at Super Bowl anyway? No, the Bengals lost. I was even more sad. Oh, I'm sorry for you, Mama. No, it's all good. Have a good one. Hello, who's this? Hi, good morning. Hey, who you want to give Donkey to? Oh, man, I want to give the Donkey of the day to my son's father, right out there in North Carolina in Charlotte. Wow, what uh -oh. do you do? We've been going, man, we've been going through a custody battle. For six years, and he keeps sending stuff to my job. Like, why you gotta have drama? Like, stop sending stuff to my job. Mm. Oh, that's whack. Yeah, that's definitely whack. I'm sorry for you, mama. Good morning. Uh, Who you want to give Donkey to? Donkey of the day should go to my cousin, doing What did he do? Years old. Um, he basically gave away his whole life in less than five minutes. Wait, what happened? Yeah, he gave away his life in less than five minutes. I was shooting up my sister's car with my mom, i.e. his aunt in the front seat. He shot up your car? Not my car, my sister's car. So apparently oh they were having a God. conversation about something 
said his daughter did, and my sister said something to his daughter, and he wanted her to address him as the adult. So he comes to the front, and he's talking, and she winds up her window. I see the gun on his waist, and I know how he is, so I'm trying to, like, you know, diffuse the situation. Uh-huh. But it's like he comes to the car so heated. Uh, all I'm talking is, like, he just got a vengeance. So she opened the door to come out, and he kicked in the door. He wouldn't even let her get out the car. Wow. So when he do come out, when did, she do get out of the car, she go and kick his car. And did you tell the authorities? Did y'all report him to the police? Get him arrested? No, let, let me finish the story. Of course he got arrested. My mom, lives, she lives okay. in like a senior home. So he came and did this at the old folks' home. So of course mm-hmm. all the old folks The police came. And we in South Carolina. Wow. So, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I, I thank God nobody got everybody's injured. Everybody's okay. Everybody's yeah. okay. Nobody's injured. But I believe he just get it in. Absolutely. Sick. Yeah, he should definitely go to jail for that. Well, I'm glad you guys are safe. Jeez. All right. Donkey of the day. And don't day. you bail him out either, because then you'll be donkey, right? Right. 800 585 1051. All right. When we come back, we have Minister Nori Muhammad joining us. He's here to talk about Minister Louis Farrakhan's speech this Sunday. It's called Swan Song, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne Morning, the God. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, the brother, Minister Nori Muhammad. Now, I wasn't here for this interview because I was out of town yesterday, but he's here. How are you, brother? Man, I'm blessed, and as they say in apostolic and Pentecostal, highly favored. There you go. I say I'm blessed black and highly favored. Yeah, I'm with that, too. With that too. <laughs> but I'm thankful to be able to share space and time with you great cultural giants. So I'm honored to be here on The Breakfast Club. Oh, thank you, man. I'm happy to have you here. And, and I got to say condolences to you um, on the loss of your daughter. I'm not even going to lie to you and tell you I, 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 I know how you feel because I couldn't even imagine, you know, but I'm yes, sending sir. you and your, your lovely wife healing energy, brother. Well, I thank you, and I, and I need it, and we need it, and we appreciate it, and, uh, you know, because, of course, out of calamities come causes, so we will continue to work to do the work she was trying to do, mm-hmm. and that was to help people to heal mm-hmm. and learn how to hustle. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're doing, and we appreciate that. Yeah, you, you gave a, a, a great speech, How to Heal and Hustle. Can, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, this was a, a message a few weeks ago, uh, returning back to the rostrum after uh, the loss of my daughter. And she, at 19, wrote a book called How to Heal and Hustle. Mm-hmm. And it was the product of her having five of her associates and friends in high school pass uh, from mental health issues Wow! before she left high school. Wow. So she wanted to teach and train and help and counsel so she wrote the book, uh, How to Heal and Hustle. So I thought it would be fitting to take a message uh, like that. And from it has uh, sprung a foundation that we're doing in her name, a Heal and Hustle Foundation that will be a virtual and a physical safe space where we'll take primarily young, young soldiers that are struggling uh, with mental issues, emotional I- issues, teaching them how to properly process the circumstances of life and how to make money, manage money, and find their purpose. That's mm. the hustle side of it. So that's that's how I was born, my brother. How, how hard was it um, not to not to put blame on, on yourself? Because I, I know we would tend to do that as parents. Well, it's, the, it's always the coulda, wouldas, and the shouldas that, that could plague your mind. Um, but once you understand that nothing that you wanted to do, God couldn't do even better, mm. and yet he still allows it to happen, then you accept it as the irrevocable will of the supreme being. And in that, you you don't just go through the trial, you can grow through the trial. Mm. So, of course, you know, we always have been doing that, but at the end of the day, we know that it was uh, God's will ultimately, his permissive will for it to be what it is, and we are striving uh, to to grow from and not just go through it. Absolutely. As you discuss her friends having dealt with mental health issues, how has the Nation of Islam evolved? Because those conversations have been having have been happening a lot more yeah. about mental health. So how is that being addressed now? Well, it I mean the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had already told us that the root 
of our problem is a spiritual problem that necessitates a spiritual solution. So the traditional program of transformation that we offer in the nation has always been a mind healing, soul repair uh, training. Mm -hmm. So we've been on that, that mm -hmm. page, but naturally with it being uh, heightened with circumstances, with the poisoning of the air, the food, the water, with the kind of propagation uh, of negative that exists in arts, entertainment, music, culture, then it's, it's compounded now. So we have been more aggressive uh, at doing it and, and trying to show really these young soldiers, because this is what the truth of it is that the greatest healing for my family has come from helping other people right. mm -hmm. that are struggling with it. Mm -hmm. So it's been for the last month and a half, I would say three to four people a week that we've been able to talk to and talk them off the ledge, mm -hmm. if you will. And most of them are young people. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we're sharing with them is that a teenage thought and an adult thought doesn't have the same nature. It's different ingredients. Whenever you are a teenager going from boy to man or girl to woman, your body is flooded by testosterone for a man, estrogen for a woman, and thoughts, you know, thoughts are, are unseen, but they're not unreal. They're electrochemical energy. So thoughts are chemistry. So when you have the chemistry of going from boy to man or girl to woman, integrating with the chemistry of your thoughts, it actually alters the way you think. So what you're thinking as a teenager, you can't trust it. Mm -hmm. And so we've been trying to show that uh, to the young soldiers. And sometimes mothers and fathers are the soundboard that the child will bounce off of. Sometimes it's uncles and aunties. Sometimes it's us in organizations, ministry, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so we've been we've been doing that mm -hmm. and using ourselves and this circumstance to allow us to be that positive soundboard that they can bounce off mm -hmm. what they're thinking and we can let them know. You don't know, don't trust don't don't trust your mind. That's thinking thinking mm -hmm. that you're dealing with right now. And so far we've had I think it's seven uh little brothers and sisters that I've talked to, four or five for my, my wife that we've been able to to help to keep them here mm -hmm. to, to live to fight another day. You know, it's so interesting when you think about uh, the NOI, I think about, you know, things that made me gravitate towards the NOI. It's simply because they healed people. Yes. That's yeah. literally what it was. They that's healed right. they healed people. Well, that's, this is the, that's what this is. The, the mm -hmm. nation of Islam is in the people business. Mm -hmm. And the product that we market, market is the truth that transforms human life. So when you look on a commercial and you see people advertising a, a product or whatever, they always show a before and an after. If you were to take the before picture of the soldiers in the nation That's right. <laughs> and you put the after picture That's right. next to them, you'll be able to see without a shadow of a doubt that no group organization or system has a higher transformation ratio than the nation. That's right. Jay Electronica always tells me the nation of Islam saved his life. Yeah. And he tells me that, like, all the time, that he wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Chicago, when he went to Chicago. That's right. And he's a beautiful brother and a beautiful example from of one coming from where he came to get to where he is and going where he's going. And that, that testimony, again, it's millions of people that have been touched by the explanation and the example of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and whatever we can do as his soldiers to help him out. Yeah, the NOI doesn't subscribe to cancel culture. They subscribe to council culture. That's right. That's yeah. good teaching there. That's good teaching. <laughs> that's good teaching. But yet people are always trying to cancel Farrakhan. Well, that's 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 the reason. You know, we, we live in a world that is governed and ruled by the forces of evil. Satan himself is the ruler of this world. The earth is God's, but the, the systems that run the earth are ruled by Satan. So when you have someone like the minister who has taught on every subject deeper than anyone has ever taught on them before, and he has the highest transformation rate of any group or any person that teaches those that believe in him, then naturally, you know, you're, you're upsetting a system that's making money off of you, keeping profit off of you gambling, smoking, drinking, uh, engaged in foolishness. So when they see him, they know he's a cleanup man. Mm -hmm. And they don't want the people cleaned up because that's bad for business. Mm -hmm.
All right, when we come back, we have more with Minister Nori Muhammad. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Minister Nori Muhammad. Charlemagne? The, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is, is delivering what he's calling his, his swan song. Look at that. I yeah. didn't like that when I heard it. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to even think about that. But do you really think this is the last time we're gonna hear from the minister in this capacity? It very well could be. Uh, we're not sure. And of course, you know the fact that he called it the swan song, and we know what that means metaphorically. That generally means that this is that beautiful last sound that a swan makes before retirement, death, or departure. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, the truth being told, Brother Char Charlemagne, the minister has already said it all. He's already taught on everything. Mm -hmm. So we don't need a new message from the minister. We need to study the message that, that he's already given us. So mm -hmm. if it is his last and final address, he deserves to be able to meet and have that rendezvous with destiny that was promised to him. And, and we've got a lot to study. Mm -hmm. So this message on the 27th, is very important for all that are any citizen of the planet to li really listen to and view. It'll be on NOI.org at 2 p.m. Eastern on February the 27th. And and right now we're living, Sister Angela, we're living in a time of great confusion and people are uncertain. They don't know what to do. You you mm -hmm. watch you watch the thinkers of this world and one day they got one one advice then they switch up. You know, you you got to take take the jab. If you if, if take the jab, if you don't take the jab, then you're going to infect. And as a matter of fact, those that took the jab take the booster because mm -hmm. the jab don't work. And then everybody else, you know, the, those that are unjabbed. Are, so it's so much confusion going on uh, in the world on that subject and others that it, it'll be sobering for us to be able to get that perspective that comes from divine. And that's what makes the minister so special mm -hmm. he's not a regular human being he's a divine man and the difference between a divine man or, and a regular person is we have two sights we have hindsight and we have insight I mean we can see the present and we can see the past mm -hmm. and we always say hindsight is 2020 which means that we normally only see the past accurately. Mm -hmm. but what makes a messenger or a divine servant different is they have three sights hindsight insight and foresight, mm -hmm. which meaning they can see down the line of time and tell us uh, what is coming and what we can do in the present to escape uh, what's coming negative and to secure the favor and reward coming for us in the future. So that's what the minister does. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's imperative that every citizen of the planet tune in on February 27th at NOI.org at 2 p.m. Eastern to hear the swan song. You know, when you look at the... Uh the Russia-China alliance, and when you look at what just happened in Ukraine, those of us who have been paying attention, we we know this is prophecy. Speak, speak to that. And and the beauty of it, unfortunately, the, you know, in, in the book of First uh, Timothy, there is a mention of how you can really determine whether you're living in the last days or not. And there's a mention of 18 spiritual diseases uh, that will exist. And if you go down the list, every single box could be checked off in the time we're living in right now. What are, what are they? I don't know all of them, mm -hmm. uh, but it deals with greed. It deals with selfishness. It mm -hmm. deals with um, vanity, being lovers of self. It deals with uh, pride, mm -hmm. envy, jealousy. It deals with having uh, strange affections. It's it's a list that you can, you can study, but all of them. We, we're living in a manifestation of all of those negatives mm -hmm. right now. So we're in that time period. And again, that's to me, you know, what makes it so, so, impar uh, so, so important and, and, a, and a really a global imperative to tune in to the one that has become and is the mouthpiece of God and the trumpet of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad so we can get an accurate diagnosis of where we are and what's coming in the future mm -hmm. so we can prevent and or secure that favor from the Lord of the Worlds. Where, where, do you, where do you think the future is going? Well, you know, as the scripture says, whenever they were talking to Jesus about how and when and what was going to happen, and he said, no man nor of the hour. That's right. No, not even the sun. So I'm not clear on what the future is going to be because I don't have that foresight. Mm -hmm. 
but the blessing again of that divine servant whenever you're blessed with one. And this is the pattern of God, you know. There's a verse in Malachi 3 and 6 that says, I am the Lord, I change it or not. It mm. means that God has a methodology and a pattern, and his pattern is consistent. History shows that any time a people are in a mess, there's a messenger. Mm. Where there's problems, a prophet is risen. Whenever a people are at war with themselves, a warner comes. When there's a crisis, then Christ is. Mm. So we are, we are in a time, and we are a people that are in a mess, a crisis, worn with ourselves, and we got plenty of problems. So if God would give a Moses to slaves and a Jesus to those that were mental slaves and a Muhammad to those that were strung out on alcohol and abusing their women and give a lot to a Sodom and Gomorrah and give a Abraham to a people that were worshiping idols, give a Noah to a people that were fighting and killing each other. Then what about us that have all that going on at the mm. same time? So there's a verse that says the last man comes in the volume of the book. Why? Because the people are in the volume of the condition. We got all conditions wrapped up in one. Mm. So I believe that when you listen to, look at, and observe the minister, you don't just see uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, but you also see Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, Job, Lot, Noah. You see the servants of God manifest in this one human being. So what he represents when you listen to him is that message that will clean up that mess, solve those problems, erase the crisis, and stop us from warring with one another. Uh, what can we expect from, from your master teacher during the swan song? I believe that anyone that brings any question to the screen that day, just bring it and watch how the God uses the minister to answer that specific question that can produce that healing uh, that is needed uh, in, in your life. I don't know all of the ingredients mm -hmm. of the message, but I do know that he's poised and he's anxious to deliver uh, this message to the world. And we should be poised and anxious sitting on the edge of our seat or holding our phone, looking at the screen, whatever we can do to make sure on February 27th at 2 p.m. Eastern, we on NOI.org tuned in to the Swan Song. That, that must be Jay Electronica. It is. He's calling. I told you you're here. Brother He's Jay. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, mighty warrior. <laughs> he FaceTimed me right away. I can't get him on the phone for anything, but I told him you were here. Hey. Man, I love that, brother. I love you. And yeah. I'll die for you when the walk you call. Man, I love you too, my brother. And I'll die for you too, mighty warrior. Can't wait to see you in a few days. All right. Uh, this Sunday, February 27th, 2 p.m.? 2 p.m. Eastern. NOI.org. NOI.org. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The Swan Song. The Swan Song. All right. It's the Breakfast Club, Brother Noe Muhammad. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank you, sir, for having me. Thank you, Sister Angela. Thank you. The Breakfast Club. It's about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Yes, the baby and NBA young boy are teaming up for a joint project called Better Than You. And they were kind enough to drop off a single neighborhood superstar that hit streaming services this morning. Here it is. Dang, they know I'm the middle man. Don't come around. Leave you found. Fuck around. It's gonna go down. You cook that shit. shit I ain't no sound. Left now and die. It's gonna turn. I left my bitch and got something new. Left her too, bitch. I'm a hound. Ready to bite me. I really don't like the nigga. In the baby. Ooh, here yeah, I dope artist, so I'm excited about this project. Yes, and as you know, Kodak Black, his album is out today. That is called Back for Everything. And he only has one feature on there, and it's with Lil Durk. And here's that song. It's about Kodak's album. Kodak uh, had a number one record last week. Uh, his album is, is going to be streaming amazingly. So I'm going to listen to it today when I head out to Atlanta. They sent that to us early. I know. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to listen to it, so I'm going to listen to it today. All right. Well, also out today, Conway the Machine has an album out, God Don't Make Mistakes. We were supposed to have him on The Breakfast Club. We're trying to figure that out right now uh, when that can happen. But here is Tear Gas featuring Rick Ross and Lil Wayne. I'm just trying to keep my head above the water. My feet on solid ground. Post-traumatic stress disorder got me smoking out of bounds. Heard it in there say he going to do something to me. How that sound? Anybody get out of bounds? Shots going to come and knock that's another album I can't wait to listen to, man. I, I, I'm going to be listening to that this weekend, too. Conway and Kodak. They gave that albums. to us early, too. I didn't, I didn't listen to it. I've been traveling. I've been on the road. I, I'm going to listen when That's the best time. To.
<laughs> All right. Also out today, Earth Gang, Ghetto Gods. And here is Earth Gang uh, featuring Jid and J. Cole. Made a left at the light and this little guy said, What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, gang? What's up, gang? Getting this money. Getting this money. Fucking this fame. This fame. I'm trapping this water. I'm trapping this water. Make it shake. Shake. Give me a dollar. Give me a Shout to Earth Gang, man. I'm, I'm still trying to, to to squash their beef with, with them in Hampton University so I can get them at home coming and performing and all that. I'm working on it. I'm almost there. All right. Well, that song is called Water Boys. Now, also, I, I know you probably saw the video for this, but Doja Cat and Tyga have Freaky Deaky out today. Mm -hmm. That's a banger right there. Doja Cat d does not miss. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, I also wanted to remind you guys that the NAACP Image Awards are going to be happening this weekend. Saturday is the main event, and they have given us those winners already. But just so you know, I'll give you some of the winners. Um, outstanding duo, group of collaborations, Silk Sonic. Also, outstanding soundtrack and compilation album went to The Harder They Fall. International song, Essence by WizKid, and that's also for outstanding music video and visual album. Outstanding female artist, Jasmine Sullivan, host. Hotels. Male artist was Anthony Hamilton. Outstanding new artist was Saweetie. Um, so those are just some of the awards that were given out already. Okay. All right. I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Now, when we come back, we got the People's Choice Mix. Get your request in 800 585 1051. You know, we throw it back on a Friday. So whatever you want to hear, let me know. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that has been saving people money for nearly 60 years. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy, and you should take a closer look at The General. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. WWPR FMHD1 New York. An iHeart Radio station. Well, got it right there on my damn finger. I will never tell a soul. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's Black History Month. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I shook up the world. What's happening? Today should be a national holiday. We're at Primal Martial Arts and Fitness right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And you see me with the gloves. Primal. Today is the day you shake up the world, baby. February 25th, 1964, in Miami, Florida, Muhammad Ali, young, arrogant, confident, fights Sonny Liston. Uh, uh, Sonny Liston. <clears throat> Muhammad Ali is eight to one underdogs, folks. The super underdog. And what does he do in seven rounds? <laughs> in seven rounds. He gives Sonny Liston that word. Knocks Sonny Liston out cold. What's the first thing he screamed to the cameras? And I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I shook up the world. 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 And that's what you should do. February 25th should be a holiday. Every year, February 25th, you shake up the world. Do something different outside your comfort zone. Do something to shake up your own world in attempts to shaking up the world. Just like Ali. <laughs> Cause I didn't know. <clears throat> Maybe you didn't either. I got hands. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, did you? I didn't know. No, no. All right, well, happy Black History Month to you and yours. All right, when we come back, we got the positive notes, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, um, shout to DJ Louis V out in Atlanta. Uh it's his birthday weekend, so I'm celebrating with him tonight and tomorrow at the Beverly, his Woo! day party, I Love 90s Brunch. So happy birthday, Louis V. And then after that, we're flying out to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Saturday night to do Club Heaven. So I do that once in the, uh, each and every month. So shout to Duvo. We're coming out there Saturday. But happy birthday to Louis V out in Atlanta. Good brother, man. Yeah, we love Louis V. Shout out to you, Louis V, and happy birthday. I wish I could be with y'all this weekend, but I'm actually going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'll be with Everybody Versus Racism. They have a few different events going on this weekend, and I'll be there. We have a panel at the National Museum of African American Music, and then we have a party after that. So shout out to them. Okay. All right. Well, leave us on a positive note. All right. Well, you know what? This weekend, Saturday, is the NAACP Image Awards. And I was asked about what one of my favorite moments was from the Image Awards. 
And I actually uh, discussed this speech, and I'm going to let her say it herself, because Fridays used to be, what would Rihanna do? So here is Rihanna when she got the President's Award back in 2020. I'm lucky I was able to start the Clara Lainell Foundation in 2012. And if there's anything that I've learned, is that we can only fix this world together. We, we can't do it divided. I cannot emphasize that enough. We can't let the desensitivity seep in. The if it's your problem, then it's not mine. It's a woman's problem. It's a black people problem. It's a poor people problem. I mean, how many of us in this room have colleagues and partners and friends from other races, sexes, religions? Well, then, you know, they want to break bread with you, right? They like you? Well, then, this is their problem, too. So when we're marching and protesting, tell your friends to pull up. Thank you to the NAACP for all of your efforts to ensure equality for our communities. Thank you for celebrating our strength and tenacity. We have been denied opportunities since the beginning of time, and still we prevail. So I'm honored. Imagine what we could do together. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?